Activity 11.2 says the information on the following page was taken from the books of Nika Traders. Then in the required section, it says draw up an adjustment debtors control account on 31 August 2016 after errors and omissions have been taken into account. Calculate the correct total of the debtors list by showing all accounts and list four main points for good inter internal control over debtors. In your information section, you are given a control account and you will see that the balance brought down on the 1st of September, according to the original account, is 53,645 Rand. And you are giving a debtors list with values on the debit and credit side. This credit value just means that one of the debtors doesn't owe us money, we actually owe them money. In this case, it was T for Yin. And if you want to go and calculate the net value of this original debtors list, you will just say the value of the debit side minus the value of the credit side gives you 50,069 Rand, which is still not the same as the balance brought down in your control account. Now, remember the first thing that I want you to do when you do a reconciliation, before you even look at the adjustments, is I want you to go and set up an entirely new debtors control account by using the information that was given in the original account. You have to ensure that all of the details are on the correct side of the account, which in this exercise they were. And then you take the values that were given and you write them in open brackets in the details column. And the reason why I write them in open brackets is because any of them can be adjusted through adjustment entry. So this just gives us room to do our adjustments. The same thing with the list. Go and set up a new list okay, by writing down every single debtor's name and the value that they owed us, or in T for Yun's case, we owed them, in brackets next to the debtor's name because any of these values can be changed with the adjustments. Now, if we look at the first adjustment, it says C Naidu's check for 135 Rand was returned by the bank marked insufficient funds. In other words, we're dealing with an RD check. Naidu has previously settled his debt of 150 Rand with this check. Okay, so what's important is I hope you've noticed the debt has settled a debt of 150 Rand with a check of 135 Rand. So this implies that the business gave the difference between the value of the debt and the value of the check to the debtor as discount. In other words, we allowed 15 Rand discount to Naidu originally. Now this check has become insufficient. So we know the accounting process is that the check must be cancelled in the CPJ and the discount must be cancelled in the general journal. Let's go and look what the accountant did wrong. It says no entry has been re made to record the difference as yet. I want you to highlight that word difference. That's where the mistake is. The check was already cancelled. It's just that 15 Rand that hasn't been cancelled in the GJ. So if you look at your control accounts, you will see that the check was cancelled in the CPJ. And then you will have to go and increase the value of the journal debits from the GJ. Why? Because if we cancel discount on an RD check, we debit debtors control. The debtor now owes us more money again, and we do this in the general journal. So our total debits for debtors control is now 15 Rand more. We also have to go and add that 15 Rand to see Naidu's account. And how do I know that? Because it says no entry was made. And if no entry was made, we have to fix the control accounts and the list. Okay, the reason why I made little ones there in brackets, and you will notice I did it with every single adjustment, is just so that you know that this refers to adjustment number one. Then the next adjustment says H. Henderson, a debtor, is insolvent, and the balance of 180 Rand on his account must be written off as a bad debt. Okay, so you know that we do this in the general journal and it must still be done. Although no entry has been made of this, Henderson's balance does not appear on the list. 
Okay, so this is perfect. We don't have to do anything to the list because Henderson isn't on our list in any case and he shouldn't be there because we're writing his debt off. Okay, so the only uh, place where this will be recorded is in the debtors control accounts and if you think about it, when we write an account off as bad debts, we do it in the general journal, but we actually credit debtors control. The reason why it goes to the credit side is because we will never see this money. So we take it out of debtors control. The company carries this loss as an expense. Okay, so our total journal credits in the general journal will be more. There would have been one more credit in the general journal, 180 Rand. Then the next transaction says on, well, the debtors journal was overcast by 3000 Rand. Okay, so if it's a totaling error in a journal, it doesn't affect the list because we never ever take journal totals, totals to a list. Okay, remember every transaction is taken to the debtors ledger and ends up in the list as they take place, but journal totals are taken to the control account at the end of the month. So now we just have to go and fix this in the control account. Okay, so next to this value, well, in this sales value from the DJ, we just have to subtract 3,000 Rand because it was overcast. Okay, so overcast means that it was 3,000 Rand more than it should have been. Then the fourth entry says an entry of 234 Rand in the DAJ was posted to data Mbeki's account as 534 Rand by mistake. Now, I want you to highlight these words, posted to the data, incorrectly. Okay, so this indicates that the DAJ value is fine, and therefore the value in the control account will be fine. The mistake was made in, in W Mbeki's account, so this will only affect the list. And what we've done, if we go to our list, is we have subtracted 534 Rand, where we should have subtracted only 234 Rand. From Becky's account. So that difference, that 300 Rand must be added back to his account because he didn't send as much goods back as we have recorded originally. Then entry number five says a credit note for 252 Rand in respect of goods returned by V. Berman was recorded in the DAJ correctly but posted to the account of V. Birkman by mistake. Okay, so in this case, our DAJ is fine. The only thing that's wrong here is that we took it to the wrong debtor. But in order to fix this, okay, we have to take it out of the one debtor's account and we have to put it in another debtor's account. Okay, and this is a correction of error that we do in the general journal. Okay, remember that. So if it was taken to a wrong data, then we fix it in the general journal. Therefore, it will actually affect our control account and our list. In the control account, we won't do anything to this DAJ value because that's fine. But in the general journal, we will go and debit the one data and credit the other data. So our total journal debits will increase by 252 Rand and our total journal credits will also be increased by 252 Rand. Okay, so we've got more debits and we've got more credits. Then in the debtors list, we have to go and add the value back to Via Birkman's account. He's the data that will be increased. Why? Because we recorded that he sent goods back when it wasn't him. Okay, so we subtracted 252 originally and we shouldn't have. We're adding it back now. And the data that actually sent the stuff back, V. Berman, must now be decreased with 252 Rand. So something that's very important is I want you to remember, if it was a case where the wrong data was affected, then it will affect the general journal as well. Okay, and please, very often the boys think that if it's a credit, then we should make this a minus 252 Rand here. 
but don't because it's already on the minus side of debtors control. So the effect that it will have on the balance of the debtors control account is that our minus will be more with 252 rand. I don't know if this makes sense what I'm trying to say, but please don't make that a minus. Then, number six, a debtor T for Yun with a credit balance of 90 rand must be carried over to the creditors ledger. Okay, so we do in fact owe him money and he doesn't owe us money. So we want to take him out of this debtor's ledger and put him in the creditors ledger. And because he has a credit balance now, we must go and debit his debtors control account and then we will credit creditors control. Okay, so this will be done in the general journal. Therefore, the total journal debits will be even more because we're debiting these accounts to get rid of that credit. Okay, with 90 rand and then T for Yun is at minus 90, but we want him to be at zero. So we add another 90 rand there. We debited his account. Then number seven, S. Godlo's account was under cost by 100 rand. If an account was under cost of an individual debtor, it will only affect the debtor's list. Under cost means that we just have to go and add 100 rand in there. There's number seven, add 100 rand to S. Godlo's account. And then lastly, number eight says, a receipt for 544 rand issued to a to H. Labiskachny in payment of her account was incorrectly recorded in the CRJ as 455 Rand and posted to the ledgers as such. Now remember, if the mistake is when we recorded the original transaction, so if it's wrong in the journal, it will be wrong in the debtors list because we use the journal to take values to the debtors list and it will be wrong in the control accounts because the total um, of that column in the journal will also be incorrect. So we have to fix it in two places. And what is the mistake? You have to go and calculate the difference. She actually paid us 544 Rand, but we only recorded 455 Rand. So we have to go and record that extra 89 Rand. We will do it here in the bank and discount line in the CRJ. Okay, so we actually received 89 Rand more. So that's why we added in there, we received more money from a debtor. And in her account, H. Labeskachny's account, we will subtract that 89 Rand because if she paid us 89 Rand more, then she owes us 89 Rand less. Okay, now that was the last entry. So what you can do after that is you can just quickly finish off all of your um, account, well, finish off the accounts and the list by just doing all of the calculations of the amounts in brackets. Some of them were unchanged. And then you can rebalance your debtors control accounts by adding all of the debit values together, writing the total in both double lines, getting the difference on the credit side, bringing it down on the 1st of September. And then you do the same thing with your list and you cross your fingers that you will get the same balance. Otherwise, you've done something wrong. So quickly, if you do all of the calculations in your list, you will get a total of 50,485, which luckily is the same as the balance brought down in your control accounts. And the two are reconciled. Then you're not done with the activity yet. They ask you to list four control internal controls for debtors now i'm just going to run through them you can list any four okay it says a business should have a good credit policy and it should be adhered to in other words you have to say uh, how will you do credit checks and when will you accept people to be your debtors and when not and how will you calculate your credit terms and all of that division of duties in other words the same person shouldn't do the debtors list and the debtors control account split the duties there should be a policy for credit approval. Debtors to be screened carefully. All transactions must have proper documentation. Pre-numbered invoices are to be used. Okay, so you have to use an invoice book with pre-numbered numbers so that you can't just um, have an employee that gets rid, rid of an invoice and then um, number the next invoice uh, incorrectly. 
Every data must have an individual account, which must be kept up to date. In other words, you have the whole data's ledger and data's list section. And then the balance of the data's control account must correspond with the data's list. Okay, so that's the reconciliation process.